What's up everybody? Blue Gabe. We are in Central Florida. A good friend of mine, Brian, who's from Illinois, and I are headed to Lake Kenansville. This place is known for three things. Lots of alligators, lots of giant big bass, and some of the biggest mosquitoes known to man. Brian didn't know what he was getting into. He didn't know where he was gonna go gator hunting. So I figured if I'm gonna bring him anywhere, I'm gonna bring him to the swampiest place I got, and that is Lake Kenansville. The road we're on right now is 13 miles long and it's nothing but potholes and dirt and dust and nastiness. And just like that, we're here. Now let me give you a little bit of history of this lake. Right down there, about a mile, where this lake busts out into the open, and I'm gonna show you in a minute, I had one of the biggest gators I've ever had in my life on and a bass boater made me break him off. He come flying down the canal. I tried to get him to stop. He paid zero attention to me, blew the gator out. He cut me off on a culvert and I met the guy that killed him a week later. He was 13-7. Now this is my pro drive and it's typically a really beautiful camouflage. But as you can see, all that white dust just turned it into like a tan camouflage. Now for those of y'all who have been following along my last three consecutive videos, you've seen us catch a bunch of dolphin mahi-mahi. I rigged one of the heads into a gator bait and we're about to hopefully fingers crossed go catch an alligator with it and i cannot wait the only bad thing is is when you're baiting alligators some of the smaller ones are hard to get because they won't grab the bait and swallow it they'll grab it and swim it under a bunch of vegetation so we're going to unload this boat start the hunt hopefully can get the gator killed before dark because i want to bass fish a little bit then we're going to start frog gigging and just a tech tip if you come here to lake keenansville this boat ramp is crazy steep so now on most typical boat ramps, I don't have to do what you're about to watch me, but this one's so steep, I can't unhook it until the boat's actually in the water. It will definitely slide off. And break your hand. Always be careful with that jack, because if there's tension on it, it will swing around and hit you so hard. And all I gotta do is push her off like so brian can now park the truck easy peasy all i gotta do is turn the batteries on come up here make sure it's not in gear Click it in gear Best part is, done. All aboard, y'all meet Mr. Brian. Are you ready though? I am ready. Brian owns a couple farms in Illinois and invited us up deer hunting. It's gonna be on like Donkey Kong come November. So here in South Florida, we can legally gator hunt from 5 p.m. till 10 a.m. Luckily for us, it's already 545 so we can start to hunt right now i'm gonna go ahead and tie my bait on i like to double up my line just a couple feet you know because the gator will roll up on your bait really bad and their scoots are really really tough i've just got some parachute cord going to the dolphin head my main line is 80 pound test beyond braid this stuff is crazy strong I use blue and orange so when I get close to the gator, I know where I'm at. As soon as I see that orange, I know I have five feet left. So we're going to turn the camera off, run down this canal as quietly as we can, looking for the right gator. And when we do, I'm going to show you all how to do the rest. All right, so we're on the far east side of the lake. Lake Kenansville is actually a big square. It's broken up into two squares. We're on the north square on the east side of it these gators get hunted a lot so i'm actually going to try to trick them i'm going to start bass fishing and while i'm doing that brian behind the camera is going to start looking with his binoculars and i'm going to be looking and wait for one of these big gators to pop up and hopefully they think we're just some innocent bass fishermen my favorite lure here is a zero spook one thing I did notice is all the vegetation is brown, meaning they just sprayed like every square inch of this lake. So I don't know how it's going to affect the fishing. It shouldn't affect the gator hunting at all though. 
We will see one pop up here in a minute. The coolest thing about this lake is any cast, you can literally catch a 12 pound largemouth. There's a freaking honker right there. Give me your binoculars. I just poked back on me again. see me about get jerked out of this boat about is the key word all right we're gonna turn the camera off get super quiet the sun's setting I just put the bait out there for right now it's all we got so we'll turn it back on if one pops up y'all don't panic that's proof that we actually did kill an alligator now, as soon as it got dark, we got both baits. I actually put another one out after that last clip that you saw. Both got eight. That's where the absolute complete crap show started. So this year, all year gator hunting, I have had struggles with gators eating my bait and swimming up under mats. I did it the other day with Tanner from Nebraska. And then again, last night, actually two different times. But this gator lost the battle for sure. And I'm gonna show you that. But first, I wanna get this meat marinating. That way I can go outside around the duck boat, what we hunted out of, and tell you the story, because I promise you it's exciting and we got some stellar footage of it. So first, this is the jowl meat of an alligator, right here on its jaw, a chunk that you don't see a ton of people eat. This is his loin, which is like the back strap in a deer. It's in the back of his tail, actually encased in another muscle. And I'll show you how I got that out. But first I wanna cut it up and get it marinated. Y'all check that out though. See that logo? Danko now has an engraver that's in-house. If you call them and order a knife, you have an option of putting your logo or you can get one of mine with my logo on it. So this is my nine inch. I'm gonna take this meat and cut it in about one inch strips, just like that. This piece of meat reminds me a lot of a turkey breast. It has that little bit of silver meat inside of it. So you wanna cut that out. It actually feels like a really, really tough piece of meat. But we're gonna find out. I've got Michael Fuguay behind the camera. Brian is a truck driver and he actually had to leave early to head to Fort Lauderdale to pick a load up and then haul it all the way to Illinois. So now the loin definitely does not have that in there. It just cut it up just like you would a deer backstrap. And that's obviously probably the best chunk of meat on the alligator. But I wanted to make something different than what everybody's used to. That's why I'm making the jaw meat. And I can definitely tell you this is a lot more tender. I've already got the frog legs marinating inside. And I filmed clean with this gator too. So I actually did it in high speed. Taking some pickle juice. Then I'm gonna take some jalapeno juice. I'm gonna let that marinate for about 30 minutes. So when it comes to cleaning an alligator, this little $6 Danko knife right here is actually how I killed the alligator because I forgot my bang stick. I always take my bay boat. Last night I took my duck boat. I got out there, got the gator right up to the side of the boat and I'm like, oh boy. This little $6 knife took the life of the alligator and cleaned the entire thing. Probably took me 30 minutes. I took its front shoulders, its rear legs, 
it's back straps, it's tail meat, it's jaw meat. Literally, I cut the whole thing up and sent it to Illinois, except for this little bit here. All right, the grease is at 360 degrees. As you can see, I dumped out all that vinegar and jalapeno juice and pickle juice, put in the frog legs, and now I added a bunch of buttermilk. Probably been sitting for 10 minutes. I'm gonna add it to my seasoning mix. Now, we're deep frying everything. Kelly's out of town, she's at the spring. I can eat what I want, how I wanna eat it. Michael's from Mississippi. He loves him some gator meat. And we're about to have us a feast. This is what I added, and I had no idea it was as spicy as it is. Y'all tread lightly with that stuff. Now this is my can cooker breader. It's pretty easy and convenient. You don't make a mess. Flip it a couple times. And it's shaking bait time. TNT. Y'all like that little clip I threw in there, didn't you? All you Ricky Bobby fans. I wish we could add more than six seconds though. I would have had y'all dying if I could. Look at that. Looks ready to go in the grease. Always, always, always try to have your grease at 350, 360 degrees when you go to cook gator meat. Now, I'll tell you a little bit of the last night's hunt. When that gator started taking us into that puppet, I had thankfully seen him eat with my binoculars, so I knew he had it down his throat. And I was so aggravated from it happening so many times, I literally put the brakes on him. I stopped him with my drag, and when we got up there with the boat, and I saw the situation, I started pulling him in, and I thought he spit the bait, and all of a sudden you're gonna see me react. I pulled the gator's mouth right up to my hand, and I didn't know he was there until he took a breath. And I jumped back, and then we got the harpoon ready, and we harpooned him. Damn it, stop him. You think that gator's gonna be as good as those? I don't know about that. Y'all check out them frog legs. Yeah. Now the frogs, I didn't film a, t a bunch of because once you've seen it done once, you've seen it done a million times. We were just going down a bank and Brian was up front gigging them, gig one at a time, pull them off, throw them in the cooler and keep on going. Cleaning them now, you cut it right down the back and then just pull its pants off. And that's the final product. If you cook these frogs when they're fresh, they'll start jumping around in that grease. Might freak out some of your company a little bit. I think we gigged 11. When we first started last night, the frogs were everywhere, but I wanted to get the alligator killed first. And I sort of regretted that because once we did kill the gator, the frogs disappeared. Same thing as the gator, shake it around. I'm gonna leave them in there and pull this meat out because I know it's done now. Look at that golden brown goodness. A lot of y'all that have tried alligator in a restaurant, you're typically getting big giant gators and not the best quality meat. This gator here was only about eight and a half foot long and it's gonna be really, really good to eat. Leave a comment below if it weirds you out that we eat frog legs, especially when we eat the toes. Woo, but can you smell it? This is a meal that's so pretty, I think I'm gonna attempt to take a thumbnail with the food. And I rarely do that. You gotta go to 16 by nine, do some wide angle, and see if we can't get in there and get those feet. Welcome to Blue Gabe's Kitchen Surf and Turf. Frog legs, I, you can't call this a surf and turf because they both live in the water. That's true. And they both breathe air, so. 
whatever. This is just a South Florida alligator frog leg. Just what we grew up on. But I didn't grow up on it. Not spicy. Try one of them. Well, you know it's not going to be spicy to me. I don't know, maybe. So he grew up in Mississippi where they cut the feet off the frogs, and I think that's a sin. Hey, that's spicy. Yeah, the mouth's on fire. They put a lot of cayenne pepper in it, mm -hmm. I think. So the toes, mm -hmm. see that? You go. Very good, though. That's crunchy. Listen, I've eaten everything that you can name. And there's a good chance I'm not going to eat those toes. Why? Look right here. That's a good one. Mmm. Mmm. Well, you, I mean, you could start with the thigh and work your way down. Or tell them to eat the legs. Well, I'm going to eat the leg. You know what? My first bite of gator was definitely, I'm having a hard time chewing it, the jaw meat. If it was the loin, like this piece right here, look at that. You saw me bite and I'm still chewing the jaw meat. That just tears apart. It tastes just as good as the rest. You know, frogs, people have a, like a taboo with frogs. They're not bad at all. If you can get past, it's a frog. Now, these potatoes right here are to die for. I just poured them in the cast iron skillet with some can cooker Creole seasonings, lots of olive oil and onions. Put a little bit of ketchup on those. Ooh. The broccoli is Kelly's famous broccoli. She almost cooks it exactly like I cook the potatoes, minus the Creole seasonings. Sear it, like almost brown the broccoli in a cast iron skillet with olive oil. It's so good. So the little knuckles. Man, my son, my youngest son, ain't no way. Not a whole, oh, you got the whole foot, huh? You went for the whole foot. You're not supposed to eat the whole foot? Just eat the toes. Well, I got the whole foot. <laughs> if you haven't tried gator meat, apply for Florida tags. You can get Florida public land gator tags even if you're from out of state. It's a lot more expensive. It's, I think, $1,000. For that $1,000, you get two tags. For us, it's $287, and we get two tags. It's a full lottery system. Find a good guy to take you. You eat tons of meat. It's so much better than what you get at a restaurant. It is. It's night and day. Like, if you get a gator stick at the fair or something oh, like that, yeah. this is not even... It's not even the same ball. Most of the time, you're eating mostly batter at a restaurant anyway. Frogs are so good. Now, I was going to tell you about the hunt outside at the boat, but it's too hot out there. I'm going to tell you right here. When that gator ate, he went into a tusset like I've already showed you, which is a tusset starts out just a little clump of weeds and more weeds grow on top of it and it gets bigger and bigger and thicker and thicker and it's actually floating. It looks like dry land, but if you step on it, you could fall through it. I've even seen it thick enough that you could walk across it and yet it's still floating. The gators will go up under there and what I think is happening is it's starting to cool off here in Florida right now. They're not actively wanting to eat, but they're actively wanting to kill things and they see our bait, come over, grab it, swim it under to toss it and they'll just put it up under there. They want your, they want the meat to rot so it doesn't take so much energy energy to digest it. And that's what they do with people and dogs. I've lost hog dogs in the past where they'll grab them and you'll find them under a log, get your tracking collar back and move on because there's nothing left to do but weep for the dog. So we got in there, I cut him all the way loose, got him out, he almost bit me. That's when I discovered I didn't have a bank stick. So I had to shank him. You did that, that little Danko knife. I wish Brian was here so he could tell you. He's like, what do you mean you don't have a bank stick? I said, bro, I got a bank stick. I just don't have bullets. <laughs> it ain't that big of a deal. If you do try to be stupid enough to kill an alligator with a knife, you better be careful because they'll spin around and bite you in a New York second. And if a gator does bite you, Whatever it's biting, like arm, leg, 
it's coming off more than likely. So we're going to lose it. We got the gator loaded up, got home at two o'clock this morning, cleaned him right outside. Brian took 90% of it. We got this little chunk that we got that, cause that's all we need. And you're watching us eat. Tomorrow, I'm going to go do a mullet video. The mullet are running right now. I want some fried mullet backbones. And I'm going to show you all how to split tail rig a mullet for Wahoo. And then I think we're doing a fish gigging video. What you going to gig? Flounder, hopefully. Stuart Fork here. This is one of the rare meals you'll see me eat all of, because I love it. And you probably own me. I haven't ate anything. If you do go to Lake Kenansville to gator hunt or bass fish, be careful because there's dry spots all across that lake. Mike and I have some serious history there. One of my biggest bass ever. <laughs> he missed the net. About caused me to have a heart attack. Not true. <clears throat> I got him on the deck. Yeah. I proceeded to lay him down on the deck. And then uh, we caught like three nine pounders in one night. Oh my goodness. Oh, nighttime vision. Let me tell y'all something about me. I don't think he could have did it. Last night we're set up, listen to this, and this is a good time to show some more footage last night. We're set up, Michael. It is glass calm as far as you can see. The sun setting. Fish are busting everywhere, and I had to sit there and be quiet and couldn't throw a spook. With a spook tied on right next to me. What happened? That was one of the hardest things I've ever done. Because I didn't want the gator to hear us or see us because we were in such a tight little hole. Typically, Lake Okeechobee, you're fishing big, massive, wide open areas. But Keenansville is such a small lake, and then the hydrilla is so thick. We were fishing a little tight pocket about the size of two football fields. Man, that pepper's hot. It is very hot. So I couldn't throw my Zara Spook right there at the last minutes of daylight when you just get crushed. I did have a big bite though earlier on in the evening and missed him like a jerk. I think that we had a cool front come through yesterday and that slowed him down a bit, but I'm gonna take Jake back there this weekend film a cool video like we did at Lake Garcia and bring y'all along. So You gonna do a night fishing? <laughs> you lose too many lures fishing at night in Florida, the gators eat them. Well, you wasn't there since they sprayed. Oh yeah, that lake's dead. You remember the popping purchase? Did you get one of these darker pieces? I'm telling you, they're all hot. That's hotter than a lighter piece. <laughs> y'all, we got to get up out of here. I got editing to do. Boats to clean. You don't even want to go out there and see my duck boat from last night. There is mud from one end of that thing to the other. I got to edit this video, get it up for you guys. Right now, though, like Jake always says, it's time to get up out of here and get the gator meat out of here.